So this is the first chapter seven lecture. We'll talk about energy flow, oxidation reduction reactions, coenzymes, a little bit about ATP production kind of in general, um, and an overview of cellular respiration and mitochondrial anatomy. In the second chapter seven lecture, we will go over cellular respiration in much more detail. So life is work and requires energy. Energy flows into systems as sunlight for the most part and out as heat. Um, there's some systems that rely on chemosynthetic organisms where they do chemosynthesis instead of photosynthesis. So like uh, organisms at the bottom of the ocean at hydrothermal vents would be an example of that. Um, but most of them rely on photosynthetic organisms like plants or algae or even some bacteria um, to generate the organic molecules, so carbohydrate, and also to generate oxygen. The chemical energy in those carbohydrates are used to regenerate ATP, which ultimately powers work in the organism. So that's the process of cellular respiration, going from that carbohydrate or organic molecule um, and using that to make ATP. Um, so the photosynthetic organisms like the plants and algae and all of that um, are going to rely on that carbohydrate, but also the heterotrophic organisms like ourselves um, are going to ultimately get our organic molecules or carbohydrates from another organism. Um, so this chapter will talk about cellular respiration and in the next chapter we'll talk about photosynthesis. So both cellular respiration, which this chapter covers, and photosynthesis, which is covered in the next chapter, are redox reactions. Basically these reactions are going to involve the loss and gain of electrons. So oxidation is the term for the loss of electrons and reduction is the term for gain of electrons. And for most biological redox reactions, we can kind of cheat and keep track of an entire hydrogen atom and the electron that goes with it. So in our biological reactions, we can follow um, hydrogen atoms as a way to follow those electrons. In the image below, we're just showing you compound A and compound B um, losing and gaining electrons there and using the words oxidation and reduction appropriately. So there's a couple memory tricks you can use to remember oxidation and reduction. Um, so the first one is oil rig. So oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So that sometimes helps people. Or another one is Leo the lion says grr. So Leo, L-E-O, loss of electrons is oxidation. And grr, G-E-R, gain of electrons is reduction. I personally like the Leo the lion one because, I don't know, I think it's funnier and easier to remember. And it also tells you what you're losing or gaining right in the memory trick itself there. So in this chapter, we'll talk about coenzymes in their role as kind of electron carriers. So coenzymes are going to gain electrons, so that would be reduced, or they would be reduced. So um, in cellular respiration, we'll talk about NAD um, carrying a hydrogen and its electron to become NADH, and FAD picking up hydrogens and electrons, so becoming FADH or FADH2. Um, and then in photosynthesis, which again is in the next chapter, we'll talk about NADP picking up electron and hydrogen there. So in the picture below, um, you can see we've got an organic molecule. Um, sometimes people think it looks like a monster with googly eyes, but the googly eyes on that kind of globby looking thing in that first picture are supposed to be hydrogens with electrons. Um, so we've got an organic molecule that includes two hydrogen atoms, and then we've got a purple circle that's supposed to represent our NAD, which is a coenzyme or electron carrier. Um, and the organic molecule is going to be oxidized, so it's going to lose its electrons, and the NAD is going to be reduced, so it's going to gain electrons to become NADH plus H in that case. So we've already talked about how ATP can be produced, but just to remind you, there's two big ways we can produce ATP with either oxidative phosphorylation, um, which is really going to produce the bulk of ATP in living things. Um, this uses an electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, which we'll talk about more coming up. But basically, there's a hydrogen ion concentration gradient that you set up um, by moving electrons um, through membrane proteins to kind of pump protons um, to one side of the membrane. 
and not very many protons on the other side of the membrane. So then these protons or hydrogen ions go through this molecule called ATP synthase. ATP synthase turns kind of like a, like a windmill or a turbine, um, and that spinning provides the energy to synthesize ATP from ADP and a phosphate group. With substrate level phosphorylation, this makes less ATP. We're going to utilize this in glycolysis in the citric acid cycle though. And basically in this case, an enzyme transfers a phosphate group directly from a substrate um, to an ADP to produce ATP. This is also sometimes called direct phosphorylation. So big overview on cellular respiration. Again, we're gonna talk about cellular respiration more in the next part of this chapter. But um, the big picture on cellular respiration is that cellular respiration is the process where we make our ATP. Um, I think though many students hear the word respiration and think breathing, but cellular respiration is not breathing. Um, cellular respiration is the reason you breathe though because um, in our body, cellular respiration requires oxygen and produces carbon dioxide. So you breathe to take in that oxygen and get rid of the excess um, carbon dioxide. Um, and technically, some organisms don't need oxygen. Um, we will talk about that later, though. Um, so the big picture on cellular respiration is that you break down organic molecules, we'll focus on glucose, and then that releases energy. And the energy that's released is used to produce ATP. Um, so this is a redox reaction. You can see below, um, if we start with glucose and oxygen, we get carbon dioxide, water, and the energy required to make ATP. So, Let's look at some examples here. Um, in the first example, we've got 4NADH plus oxygen, and we get 4NAD and 4H2O. So using our terms oxidized and reduced, um, which of the following is oxidized? So NADH is oxidized to NAD because remember again, loss of electrons, and in this case we're tracking hydrogens, is oxidation. So then who's reduced? So in this case, the oxygen is reduced to water um, because again, reduction is gain of electrons. And again, we're really keeping track of hydrogens because it's a little bit easier. So oxygen um, is reduced to H2O. So let's look at the next equation. We've got glucose, which is C6H12O6, and NAD, and we get pyruvic acid, which is C3H5O3, and NADH. So who is, or what really, what is oxidized? So here our glucose is oxidized to pyruvic acid. Um, pyruvic acid has um, c 3 h 5O3, glucose is C6H12O6, so glucose is oxidized or glucose has lost electrons, um, and now we have pyruvic acid. And then um, the NAD is reduced, so it's gained electrons to become NADH. So the next equation we have here, we've got acetyl coenzyme A, which is C2H4O4, um, plus 1FAD and 3NAD, and we get two carbon dioxide, one FADH, and three NADH. So acetylcoenzyme A is oxidized to carbon dioxide, and FAD is reduced to FADH, and our NAD is reduced to NADH. So we can say FADH and NADH are reduced coenzymes. And then what's the main point or kind of the big picture behind cellular respiration again? So on this one, I don't have a little pop-up for you, but the big picture behind cellular respiration is that cellular respiration um, releases energy from organic molecules and allows us to use that energy to produce ATP. So a big picture for cellular respiration is that cellular respiration produces ATP. So cellular respiration can really be broken down into four big phases. Um, we've got glycolysis, we've got pyruvate oxidation, or some places call it um, the PrEP reaction. Then we've got the citric acid cycle, which is also called the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle. And we've got oxidative phosphorylation, which some places just call 
um, the electron transport chain, or sometimes it's called the electron transport chain in chemiosmosis. Um, so in the next lecture video, we will talk more about the phases of cellular respiration in more detail. Um, and when we do that, we're really going to focus on tracking a glucose molecule through the phases of cellular respiration. It's not that you just use glucose, um, but it kind of simplifies things, which I always hesitate to say because it's really not a very simple process, but um, if we just look at glucose, it sort of simplifies keeping track of the process overall. So if you look at this, um, it shows you all of your different reactions. That thing that looks like a jelly bean with tiger stripes is the mitochondria, um, or is the mitochondrion, which would be singular. And a good review when you get done with this chapter is to look at that picture and make sure you can explain everything that's going on in that picture. Um, an important side note, um, since cellular respiration takes place inside of a mitochondrion in eukaryotic organisms, um, we need to know some mitochondria anatomy. So the cristae is the inner membrane and um, it's very folded up to increase surface area and that's the location of the electron transport chain which we'll talk about later and then the fluid within the mitochondria is called the matrix and this is the location of um, pyruvate oxidation or the prep reaction and the citric acid cycle so that was the end of chapter 7.1 um, we talked about energy flow, um, oxidation and reduction reactions. Remember, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. We talked about coenzymes and their role as electron carriers. And we talked about the two methods for ATP production, or kind of two big picture methods for ATP production. So um, oxidative phosphorylation or direct phosphorylation or substrate level phosphorylation. And then we talked about the big picture on cellular respiration. So next video, we'll go into more details on the specifics of cellular respiration.